All right, 7.1 and 7.2, vectors as forces and velocity, and applications of vectors. So this is what we're looking at here in, the, in chapter 7. We're, to be able to solve problems algebraically, we need to determine the components. This process is called resolving a vector. So resolving a vector means that we have given some vector r, which has the components a, b, we can draw this particular vector, let's say in the first quadrant, so that we have this vector r, where it is a component of the horizontal vector a and the horizontal vector b. Okay, and knowing this, we can use the, a ratio to determine the relationship uh, the angle uh, to determine the relationship with the uh, horizontal vector. So if you look at the question here, you can see that theta here is, this is your resultant vector r, such that you have theta, which is the angle that the resultant vector makes with the horizontal line. So basically the tail-to-tail -tail section if we're talking about resultant, the tail-to-tail. -tail. Theta is the smallest non-negative angle that R makes with the positive x-axis. So basically, if it was in a different quadrant, we would have to find the angle with the x-axis. All right, now theta is called the direction's angle of R. And this direction's angle is we need to understand that it's the direction's angle with respect to r. Theta is the closest, it's the angle that it makes with the closest x-axis. So not just the positive x-axis, but any x-axis, regardless of what quadrant it's in. It is known as the direction's angle. So even with that, for example, in that angle, if you look at that example over here, you'll see that the r is in quadrant 3. Well, the closest angle that it makes with the x-axis is this angle right there. Okay? All right, next. An air balloon is drifting on a bearing of 300 degrees at 40 kilometers per hour. Express the velocity in component form, i.e. express the velocity as an algebraic vector. To do this, we need to draw this. So. 300 degrees means that at a bearing means we measure it clockwise from the north 300 degrees. That lands us in the second quadrant. The angle that it makes with the closest x-axis would be, hopefully you're thinking, 30 degrees. We know that it's traveling at 40 kilometers per hour. So we need to express this particular velocity in component form. To do that, we need to know the horizontal and vertical vectors that are made with this resultant vector. So the horizontal component is going to be cosine of 30 is equal to x over 40. Solving for x we will then multiply 40 times cosine of 30 to get that value. Now let's look at the y value. To calculate the y value, we take sine of 30 is equal to y over 40. So again, this is the horizontal component, that will be your x, and this is the vertical component, and that's your y, and we have to solve for it. So 40 times cosine of 30 and 40 times sine 30. So we end up with cosine of 30 is a special angle. That will be root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2 is equal to x over 40. And sine of 30 is 1 over 2, and that equals y over 40. So it turns out that we get 20 root 3 as our x value and 20 as our y value. And that's the components of our resultant vector. Okay, the velocity in component form.
and we can write it in component form or as an algebraic vector. And in the question it says express as both. So we show it in both forms. All right, next one. Example number two. An airplane is flying on a heading of 320 degrees at a speed of 300 kilometers per hour. The wind is blowing on a bearing of 70 degrees with a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Determine the actual speed of the aircraft relative to the ground. So again, we need to be able to draw this. So we're going to draw 320 degrees. It lands in the second quadrant. Remember bearing is measured from the north and it measured in a clockwise direction to end up here. So 320 degrees means that the angle with the closest x-axis will be, okay, angle with the closest x-axis, we're going to find that. But we do know that the wind is blowing on a bearing of 70 degrees with a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. So this is 70 degrees. This is our wind. The blue is our wind. The black is our angle 320 degrees. So what do we do here? The goal is, is we need to find out what the actual plane is, the actual speed of the aircraft relative to the ground. So the resultant. To do that, we need to be able to draw our uh, vectors tip to tail. So we do that by creating that 70 degree angle at the end of it. So we have tip to tail. And we know that this angle here will equal a certain value, which is now looking here, be very careful. In here, we have 40 degrees right here. Here we have 70. The total is 110. So we need to know this angle right here. So this angle is 180 minus that. So that gives us 70 degrees. This is our resultant vector that it's traveling in. This is what we're looking for. This is our resultant plane traveling. 70 degrees. This is the plane. This is the wind pushing it so that we have to know what the speed of the aircraft is relative to the ground. Speed of the aircraft is going to be adding all the information. The wind is traveling 50 kilometers per hour. The plane is traveling not 320 but 300 kilometers per hour, so let's change that. So we're looking at 300 kilometers per hour. And then what we have to do is find the magnitude of the resultant vector. To do that, we're going to use cosine law. So 50 squared plus 30 squared minus 2 times 50 times 300 cosine of 70. And you find out that it's traveling 286.77 kilometers per hour. The next thing we need to know is the angle that it makes with the ground. Oh no, actually, sorry, it's actually just asked us for the speed of the aircraft. So all we needed was what is the magnitude of that resultant vector, which is 286.77 kilometers per hour. If we needed to find the angle, you would have to know which angle you're looking for. All right, next one. Oh, example number three. Two monster trucks are pulling on a peg stuck in the ground. The blue truck pulls with a force of 2,500 2, newtons east. The red truck pulls with a force of 1,000 newtons northeast. Find the resultant force. So we have 2,500 newtons pulling eastwards. The red truck is pulling 1,000 newtons northeast. So the angle that we have from east to northeast is actually 45 degrees. And we're asked to find the resultant force. So we redraw the angle so that it's tip to tail. We find that that angle is 135 degrees. 
find the resultant force. The resultant force turns out to be, once we multiply everything out, 3,284.1337 newtons. So this is the resultant force. The resultant force applied on uh, the peg stuck on the ground. All right, next. Equilibrium, sometimes, when forces act on objects, the object does not move. The object is said to be in equilibrium. The sum of the forces acting on an object turns out to be zero. Another thing to note, um, in order to have uh, equilibrium, you have to note that, in, for example, in a triangle, let's say you have three sides, A, B, and C. In order for equilibrium to occur, the sum of two sides must be greater than or equal to the, the third side. So the sum of two sides must be greater than or equal to the third side. So if that is not the case, then it's impossible to have an, uh, a case of equilibrium. And that's important to note. And that's actually found in your textbook. All right, next part. A 150 Newton sign is suspended from the ceiling by two ropes. That makes angles of 35 degrees and 40 degrees with the ceiling. Determine the tension in each of the ropes. So we're drawing this out. So one of the ropes is blue and has a 35 degree angle. The other rope is 40 degrees and that makes another angle. Now what we have to do is create the proper vector. So the 40 degree one so note that this object has to act in equilibrium, meaning that it has, in order to stay where it is, the 150 newtons has to act in the opposite direction. It's not hanging, but pulling it up to stay where it is, 150 newtons. That means the black one stays where it is. We move the blue one over to create our tip to tail diagram. That 35 degrees moves into the top part where the ceiling is, that's the green, and we note that the object makes a 90 degree angle with the ceiling. So, the, since it makes a 90, 90 degree with the ceiling, that means the top angle has to be 55 degrees, and that bottom angle has to be 50 degrees. So we can use um, the sine law to solve this by saying sine of 50 over T1 is equal to sine of 55 over T2 is equal to sine of 75 over 150. And we use sine law to solve this problem. And this is the solution in Newton form. All right, that's the end of this, folks. Just a minute. Okay, so again, you have your T1 and your T2 values right here. And these are the tensions in each of the two ropes. 118 represents the angle with the blue, so the 35 degree angle. 127 tension represents the 40 degree angle. All right, folks, that's the end of the video. Take care. Have a good night.